Well, let's return straight away to that breaking news of this hour that uh, one of uh, the leading British comedians of the last 30 years, Rick Mail, has died at the age of 56. He shot to fame back in the 1980s as Rick in The Young Ones, a show which he co-wrote alongside Ben Elton. Well, he later went on to star as Lord Flashheart in Blackadder and was later reunited with Aid Edmondson from The Young Ones in the BBC comedy Bottom. Well, let's uh, speak once again to our entertainment correspondent, Lisa Mazimba, who is here with me. And Lisa, what, since we last spoke, well, just the tributes are flooding in, aren't they? Yes, you can imagine this is very shocking news to a lot of people, and uh, social media is full of uh, names paying tribute to him. Uh, a few minutes ago, Charlie Brooker tweeted, Oh no, RIP Rick Mail. Uh, David Williams, the comedian, uh, actor and writer, said, I'm heartbroken that my comedy idol growing up, Rick Mail, has died. He made me want to be a comedian. Uh, the comedian Marcus Brigstock said, uh, Rick Mail was probably the first comedian I could say I was a fan of. That's so sad. Love and best wishes to his family and friends, RIP. And the comedian uh, Rufus Hound has also uh, tweeted saying, Drop Dead Fred, uh, which was a movie he made in Hollywood, uh, will always be my imaginary friend. Hashtag gutted, hashtag goodbye, Rick. So, yes, you know, we're expecting many more tributes to uh, come in over the next few hours as the news does spread. Uh, and that's uh, still what we were seeing, and uh, now this footage from the young ones. I mean, I was talking to John Lloyd, uh, the veteran producer, a little earlier, and he was making the point it was unlike anything that had been seen on television up to then. Absolutely. It was, uh, you know, it was really shocking stuff to a lot of people. It really rewrote the, the rules of comedy as they stood at the time, this 1980s alternative comedy scene. Uh, and it was, of course, tremendously popular uh, with so many people inspired a lot of comedians who were at the top of their game right now. It wasn't just the young ones, of course. It was all those things like Filthy Rich and Catflap, uh, the new statesman where he played uh, a uh, conservative uh, MP who he lampooned in, in that programme, like Bottom. So many of these, of course, he also uh, worked with his uh, close friend Aid Edmondson on, going right the way back to the young ones and through some of those classic comedy programmes. But uh, people will also remember him popping up in uh, Black Adder as uh, Lord Flashheart, as well as straighter acting roles. He uh, did a way Waiting for Goddard on the West End stage with uh, Aid Edmondson uh, played uh, relatively straight roles uh, a couple of times in uh, Jonathan Creek, the comedy drama series. But uh, the things people remember him most for were things like Blackadder, things like The Young Ones, those things, again, like the comic strip on Channel 4, which at the time seemed to be rewriting the rules of comedy and doing things that nobody had ever really seen before. And it was multi-talent, wasn't it, in the sense that you make the point about uh, writing, John Lloyd was talking about what a great actor he was mm. and uh, and seeing him in stand-up and just having himself, you know, be, yeah. being an absolute fit of that. Yeah, no, absolutely. He understood comedy and he could push it to its very limits and some would argue sometimes uh, beyond. And he understood what that kind of audience in the 1980s and 1990s was actually looking for, which was why he was uh, such a, an inspirational figure to so many people. So many comedians cite the young ones in the 1980s as being the first instinct I and mean, sort of first indication they had of, of the direction comedy was going in and of course you know he and people like Aid Edmondson and Ben Elton they all built on their reputations that uh, they established on those kind of shows way back then. All right Lizzo thanks once again thank you. Well let's speak now to the former Spitting Image star Steve Nallon probably most famous as the voice of Margaret Thatcher in that show who worked with Rick Mail on the ITV comedy The New Statesman. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Hello. And uh, hello, Steve Nellan. Just tell us, first of all, we've had this news very suddenly this afternoon. Just uh, tell us your reaction to what we've been hearing. Well, he was, he, he, people always say this, but he generally was a lovely guy, and uh, he was the finest comic actor I've ever worked with. I mean, he, I remember him, the, the, the whole team from London, we're all up in Yorkshire, and the whole team from London turned up two hours late because the plane had been delayed. But it was Rick who came in and apologised. You know what I mean? He, he was... He, uh, and also, when he was working, we did a little scene, uh, I, I was Thatcher, but the scene I remember best of all, oddly enough, working with Rick, was the policeman outside of Number 10 Downing Street. And it, it was a walk-on extra that, that had one line, and what Rick did with this guy was, was turn this one line into a five-minute comedy sketch. He, 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 you were talking about, you know, he could, he, 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 what he could do with the comedy. He had a comic mind like no other I've ever come across. Incredibly inventive. You know what I mean? He took this one little role that this guy had and he turned it into a wonderful comic routine. He was, uh, he was a bit of a genius, really. 
And we're just seeing some of the uh, footage there of uh, the young ones. And difficult really to appreciate now just how groundbreaking some of Rick Mayle's work was in its day. Well, he was groundbreaking in, in lots of areas. You, you, you mentioned the young ones. He was also in uh, played a character called Kevin Turvey um, in a BBC show. He was also one of the best people that ever presented Jack and Ori. Um, and he did it in his own, uh, and I will say it, inimitable way. He was also very, very good. Um, I, I mentioned to him, actually, when I worked with him, I, I said, um, I said, oh, I remember you, Rick, in a, in a, a little drama with, with Annette Crosby. And he was so thrilled because that was the very first television show he ever did. And uh, he, he was just, just an incredibly fine actor. And, 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 and the comedy, you, you couldn't get anybody better. And having worked with him closely, what is going to will be your abiding memory? Do you think? I will in awe of him, frankly, uh, because uh, he was. Uh, you know, I was brought up. I was a student when the young ones, when young ones came out. So he was a sort of slightly, you know, before I came along and started working in television. Um, I, 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 I can't really say anything. I, I, I it was. It, I don't know, he, he, was, he was just a... I want to use the word joy, and why not? Because he was a joy to work with, and that's what I will remember, and a, and a very... Uh, just a very caring and, and polite, and all the things that you wouldn't sort of imagine he'd be like from the characters he played. You know, he was sort of the, the, the opposite of that in his, in, his, in his sort of personal life, in his personal dealings. He was very polite, never shout, never argue just very, very inventive. Extraordinary. Uh, Steve Mountain-Allen, thank you very much indeed for sharing your memories with us. Thank you.